Hello and welcome to a new series of videos about networks. Yes, we're talking about networks. In the beginning, we are talking about what we understand under network, make definition. Then we're talking about uh, some basic principles of networking. And then we're going into the details for two defined applications of networks. Yeah, usually defined. We will look into Ethernet and we will look into Wi Fi. So, networks. Yeah? What are networks? Well, basically it's about transferring information. And, you know, if I would talk German, then I would talk German. If you are talking, I don't know, Hindi, Mandarin, Japanese, whatever, just an example, yeah? then the information exchange would be fairly limited, I would guess. So, now I'm talking English, you might understand English. So this information exchange now is working better. That what has this to do with networking? Well, this is, you know, what in, in daily communication, where it comes to differences is maybe, yeah, the language, yeah, cultural background, a lot of stuff, where you, even in which household you grow up, yeah. How is the use of speech there? Yeah? Might differ from neighbor to neighbor. So, and exactly the same issues, communication issues, it's about transferring information. The same communication issues appear in machine to machine communication. Of course, for machine to machine communication, we need to define a lot of things yeah? that this is working, that this is really. No, they cannot. They cannot just interpret. Yeah? There, the goal is that the information which is sent is received flawlessly. Yeah? In daily communication, this will not happen. Yeah? If I'm telling something, you understand something, this might be completely different from what I intended to say. Yeah? But this should be avoided in real networks, yeah? in, in, in machine networks. So, we need to find some uh parameters yeah strictly defined parameters this is necessary to build a network what i'm talking about yeah what might such parameters be well, there's communication media. This might be, you know, are we using a copper wire? Are we using fiber optic? Are we using radio frequency? Something like this. Yeah, so a copper wire. Fiber optic, radio, such stuff. It must be defined, right? If I would use a copper wire and you try to receive something with your antenna, eh, it's not working. Eh? So it is sad. And then not only this, also the physical parameters. Needs to be Defined. So, what is the voltage level? Yeah. Voltage level, for instance. Yeah. If you are using a copper wire, you have a voltage le level or or a permittable current or something like this. Yeah, if you have fiber optics or radio, it might be the wavelength. Yeah. You need to tune. If you're using radio communication, you need to, to tune to the correct frequency. Yeah. <laughs> You will not receive something. Physical parameters. Then, even if the physical parameters is clear, we need to define somehow what is the information carrier. So, is it maybe the signal strengths? Is it the signal frequency? 
Is it the signal duration? Something like this, yeah? There are... In communication technology, it fills books, those topics, yeah? How to pack information into a signal that we can restore it at this receiver and that we can transfer a lot of information in a short time. Information carrier. Very important. Yeah? Then, how do we code control information? There we're talking about controlling the communication. So if I want to start to communicate, how do I make sure that somebody is listening? Yeah, and if I were listening, how do I receive? How do I get notified if this information is for me or for somebody else? Yeah? And such things. So, so we're talking about start signals, start and stop signals. We're talking about routing information. And so on. Yeah, those things they need to be clear. Yeah. Then uh, data formats. Data formats also. So, for instance, if we are sending digital information, yeah, what is the bit order? Is the most significant bit first? Is the least significant bit first? And if we are receiving byte wise. Is, and then what is the most significant byte if we are transferring words, for instance, and so on. Data formats, yeah, so this is a, a bit order or byte order. How is a negative uh, number? How data form? Yeah, this is all. We will talk about this, yeah? how this is achieved. Look at those all those parameters. Every, every parameter has to be well defined so that two automated systems can communicate, communicate to each other. Yeah? How did this all start? Well, the easiest communication is a point-to-point. Point-to-point -point, uh, point -point communication. So we have here a station. We have here a station. Yeah? We have here a station. We have here a station. And these two stations may communicate to each other by a point to point communication. These two stations may communicate to each other by a point to point communication. Yeah? So this is called point to point. communication. It might even occur that the, the one endpoint might even be in one element. Yeah? So here this might be actually one control element. Yeah? For instance a PLC or something like this. Yeah? In example, PLC, Programmable Logic Controller, uh, SPS in German. So if then this might be for an instance here, uh, four to twenty milliamp signal, yeah, because this is some measurement device. Then this information is transferred to the PLC. This might be some field bus. because this may be not a measurement device, but this is maybe some drive and I have to tell. So that's it. But only two are talking to each other, right? But what if this station and this station want to communicate by with each other? So do you have here station one and station two? What if they need to talk to each other? Yeah, 
Then, this central station, this is basically some sort of intermediary, uh, Vermittler uh, in German. Uh, so, if it's a natural process, yeah, then you have here a station, you have here a station, then you have this, this PLC somewhere, In the PLC, actually, there are still those stations we no, no longer see. Yeah? And then we have the communication here. Whoop, whoop. Yeah? Here we have again station one, station two. And here, the PLC is now, or whatever this is, is now also exchanging information. Information exchange. So we have here a intermediary role. So, some routing, something like this, yeah? So this is, basically that's a network, all right? So a network is just point-to-point -point connection. Somehow we need to find a way how uh, those things may be transported to another station in, inside our network. Yeah? So we, this intermediary role here can, becomes important. Uh, suddenly, this intermediary role builds from point-to-point -point connection a real network which can be yeah, like a branch, like branch and a lot of uh, connections and so on. This is how a network developed over time. Uh, in the beginning, it was just point-to-point -point communication and then it was extended. And those networks, they were really complex and they did not, they were not built to inter, interact with each other. So if you bought a network from one, com, from one company, it could only talk to this one element and so on. Because all those things, they are defined somehow, well engineered probably, but not compatible among, and then people said, hey, this is not possible. I'm a big company. I want not to be dependent on one on one other company which is supplying. I want to choose, yeah, so I want to choose my network connections. And then there was, there was the root of this reference model, network reference model, ISO OSI reference model for network communication. And this is our next topic. How does this look like? How, and you know, then, then all those, those island, solution islands grow together and suddenly some things can, can interoperability was the, was the target. Yeah? How this could be achieved, I'm going to explain in next video. Next video, ISO OSI reference, network reference model, layer model also called. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.